Hello everyone, how are you all? Welcome to One Page Biology. In today's video, we are going to discuss another very beautiful topic which is important from CSIR Life Science NET examination as well as this topic is also relatively very important for 12th standard exams those who are uh, appearing for the NEET examination and at the same time this topic is important for all the uh, common PhD related entrance exams. The name of the topic is structure of neuron. So in this particular video we are going to discuss about the structure of neuron. So let us understand. So whenever we talk about a neuron let me show you a small diagram of it. So in general a neuron is somewhat like this. So dear all as you can see this is a structure of a myelinated neuron which I have drawn. Now whenever we talk about our central nervous system. So remember central nervous system mainly includes the brain and the spinal cord. So if you consider the brain or even the spinal cord there are many many neurons which are present inside it. So the brain is composed of many many neurons as well as the spinal, com uh, spinal cord is also composed of many many neurons. And these neurons majorly can be of two types. Either they can be myelinated or they can be unmyelinated. So what you can see in the diagram right now is an example of myelinated neuron. So in such a structure of neuron let me label the parts of a neuron. So these are basically con called as the dendrons then comes the entire portion this portion of the neuron which consists of the nucleus as well as the cytoplasm this is called as the cell body or we also consider as the soma then comes the long extended region of the neuron the long extended region as you can see there is a single long extended region coming out from the cell body so this extended long region is called as exon right and then comes at the end of exon there are again small branch like structures these are known as exon terminals and the end as you can see there is bulged structures at the tips of these exon terminals so these are basically called as synaptic knobs also as you can see these are the green structures which i have drawn on the sides of exon these are called as the myelin sheets that's why i told you that this particular neuron which we are seeing in this diagram this is basically an example of a myelinated neuron. So first understand what, ex what exactly is the structure of neuron then it will be easier for us to understand the function of it. Now as far as the cell body of neuron is concerned inside the cell body we have cytoplasm right and there is a nucleus central nucleus as you can see over here. And as you can see in the cytoplasm there are these granule like structures. So these granules are called as Nizil's granule from the name of the scientists who actually discovered them. Okay. So this is briefly the structure of neuron. Now what you need to know is basically the cell body has got smaller extensions on the upper side as you can see these are the smaller extensions so the smaller extensions are called as dendrons and dendrons further will divide to form finer processes like this so these will be considered as dendrites so what is the function of this dendron or dendrites so remember the main function of neuron is to majorly conduct the impulses now these impulses are nothing but mini currents but remember 
these currents have a very 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 low voltage the normal uh, state of a neuron when we talk about it is in the it is somewhere in minus 70 millivolts of the charge so this current which is there in the neuron is of extremely low voltage and that's why we will not be able to feel the currents in our body right so remember what is the job of a neuron the job of neuron is to conduct the impulses from one point to another so the dendrons are the ones specially which will receive the impulse correct so dendrons will receive the impulse and these impulses will be carried forward it will reach to the cytoplasm and once they reaches to the cytoplasm so from all the dendrons the nerve impulses are going to come and then they are going to collect at this particular point so this is a point where we can say that there is a summation of all the impulses summation summation means the addition of all the impulses so the addition of all the impulses will occur at this particular point uh, this is just the start of the exon as you can see so there is a long exon like structure coming downwards so at this point all the impulses are going to merge all the impulses are going to add up and this point specifically this location is called as the exon hillock so at that point of exon hillock all the impulses are going to add up once the impulses are, have been added up then the impulses will be carried forward across the exon correct so exon will carry the impulse in the downward direction and ultimately the impulse is going to reach to the exon terminals like this and once they reach to the exon terminals as you can see at the tips of the exon terminal there is a synaptic knobs now these are specialized structures they are like bulbs bulb like structures inside these synaptic knobs there are something called as synaptic vesicles which have some special kind of chemicals and these chemicals are called as neurotransmitters so once the impulses reach at this particular point there will be a stimuli which will be triggered because of which these synaptic knobs are going to release these chemicals so these synaptic knobs once they release the chemicals these chemicals are called as neurotransmitters and these neurotransmitters are actually going to fill the gap which is between the two neurons so that the impulses can be transmitted from one neuron to the next neuron because in the inside our body all the neurons are connected to one another so let's just imagine that for example the impulse has to go from the tip of the fingers to our brain so it will not happen that there is a single neuron which is going from the tip of the uh, fingers to the brain directly so there will be many many neurons which will be connected to each other so at the end of each neuron there will be another neuron which will be connected that means the exon of one neuron will be connected to the dendron of the next neuron so that the impulse will be carried forward from one neuron to the another so these impulses will be carried from one neuron to the other with the help of neurotransmitters so that's why we said that this neurotransmitter is going to fill up the portion which is between the two neurons and that junction or the the we can say that the union of the two neurons is considered as the synapse so the synapse will be filled by the neurotransmitter and with the help of these neurotransmitters which are specific chemicals the impulses will be carried forward from one neuron to the other neuron now you all may wonder that now we have a clear idea of how the impulse is actually going forward but then what is the role of these myelin sheets so as we have drawn over here these myelin sheets are present so actually these myelin sheets are nothing but made up of special kind of uh, lipids and these are nothing but triglycerides only but these are 
special kind of triglycerides which have a backbone of sphingomyelin so sphingomyelin is a special kind of derived lipid and this myelin sheets are like the protective layers which are surrounding the exons so what happens is the impulses are actually passing from these gaps which are present between the myelin sheets and what are these gaps actually these gaps are called as nodes of ranvier so the impulses are actually traveling from one node of ranvier to the next node of ranvier and this phenomenon of jumping of the impulse from one node of ranvier to the next node of ranvier is called as saltation so remember that this is an important uh, phenomenon when it comes to the movement of impulses so the impulses in case of myelinated neurons actually jump from one point to the other that is they actually jump from one node of ranvier to the another node of ranvier that means they are traveling in a faster manner and this effect is called as saltation so what is the main objective behind saltation the main objective behind saltation is the faster movement of impulses and that's why we can say that major uh, the majority of neurons which are present in our uh, central nervous system these are mainly comprised of myelinated neurons so myelinated neurons will help in faster movement of impulses so i hope you have understood this concept of structure of neuron uh, specifically the structure of myelinated neuron if you have understood the video please like share and subscribe to one page biology do share it with your friends and if you have any doubts or suggestions do let me know in the comment section see you all in the next video with some other biology related concept till that time take care of yourself thank you so much bye bye